Hey everyone, Sagriasen here, and today I'm doing a draw it again, or a paint it again, I don't know uh, which one to call it, uh, image that I originally did, so the one on the left, um, I originally did it in 2008, and that was when I was, I guess, 24. And the reason I'm doing this is I had uh, one of my patrons, uh, Eric Brothers, uh, commission me to uh, do one of these with an old image I made called A Girl and Her Doll. And it was a pretty interesting experience. So I figured, well, I hadn't recorded that one as a video. So I thought, okay, let me try on another image done around the same time and see if I, you know, can do it again and do it better and maybe give you some tips on what I'm doing. So the first thing is the things, you know, that I know now that I didn't before. Um, the first thing is the composition, I think. Um, before I really wasn't thinking in terms of creating an image on the page and thinking about negative and positive space. So here I have the head sort of pushed up. I have the, I made the hair a bigger shape. Um, and what I'm trying to do is make a more interesting uh, background shape actually. So by, you see how it kind of breaks into two sections and then there's um, having the character's head close to the top seems to be good compositionally as well. It, it makes things look pretty dynamic, I feel. Um, and then having this big S shape with the hair. So that type of swooping big shape sort of can help to lead the eye all the way up the image. So for instance, if you start looking at the bottom of the image, um, your eye is gonna be led upwards. And now what I'm doing is I'm smudging. So um, the technique I, I guess I've developed, but I'm sure not the only one. Uh, but the thing I use now is I'll do like a rough sketch. And often I do this traditionally in my sketchbook uh, with pen. And then I bring it in digitally. Um, I do the sketch and in this case I did a digital sketch. Uh, then I throw over some gray to like tone it down, um, and then I throw another layer of gray to tone down the lines. So the first one sort of um, is set on multiply, uh, and that just darkens the whole thing. And then the next one takes down the lines, and then what I do is this stage where I put in occlusion shadows. I work on my darks, and in the original there really wasn't any of that. Um, Maybe in the hair you can say there's some occlusion shadows, but um, not much. And, and those are really important for giving like a three-dimensional feel. And there was also not really a sense of form or anatomy. It was, I mean, I was doing it from imagination. Uh, and this one I'm still doing from imagination, but I have a much better grasp of anatomy now and form. And without that it's very hard to understand where things should go. You sort of place them based on like, I think things go here. Um, like, I think this is how a body works, but it's not really that way. And I'm not saying I'm, you know, perfect uh, with my anatomy right now, because uh, I'm still really not, but it is further along than before. And that would be the biggest um, lesson I would I keep trying to tell people like it's all about drawing because um, I don't paint much uh, nowadays, um, like really, really little. Uh, I mostly, you know, I'm doing teaching and that's the, like most of my time is, is into teaching and I don't really do images or, you know, too much freelance work. And so, the painting skills should be going way down, but because my drawing skills, I mean, I still draw all the time, uh, are going up, the painting kind of catches up. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so painting is really important. And then what I've done in the meantime, I added a background. Uh, the other one had like a white background, which isn't terrible, 
But if I use white backgrounds, what I tend to do is do a very high key image. For instance, uh, a lot of pastels, um, the lines won't go to black. So maybe my lines would be in value around a mid gray. And now what I'm doing is just trying to add some detail, I guess. Uh, I'm not saying it's good because it's not. I'm not. I, I really didn't like the design that I originally did. And I didn't know whether I should completely change it or try and keep it roughly the same. And I thought, okay, I'll try and keep the design roughly the same um, so I can focus more on, okay, what has improved in terms of my technical skills. Um, but it still felt like there needs to be more stuff going on. And this is something I had a lot of trouble with. You can see in the image on the left, the, the original one, I added like these cut lines in the, the gloves. Um, that's really just me trying to add some detail. Um, probably the same was true with the, the thing on her head. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It wasn't a well thought out design. It was more like, um, well, I want to draw a girl, I guess, an elf girl. Um, what do I do? <laughs> and I, at, at this point, I was never really looking at um, references of like, well, what does an elf look like? Or, I mean, you know, a generic elf or something like that, and then working with it. So I just, uh, let's throw a skull on the head. And so in this one, and to pay much more attention to how this skull would be in perspective, um, and the original one just, it's sort of sitting there and you can see her forehead sort of flows right into the skull. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't feel like this is sitting on top of her head. Uh, and then the things on the collar and the, uh, the crotch area, those black areas, I think that was just understanding like, well, I need something to unify it. And I'd heard of, um, and here what I'm doing, I'm just coloring the image, but I'd heard of uh, using common elements throughout a design to create, um, uh, what's the word, uh, when you repeat design throughout an image. I forget. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's like consistency throughout throughout the design. Um, and so that was that attempt, but it really doesn't feel like it carries over properly. So um, I wouldn't do that because you look at the skull and it looks like, okay, so there's this skull thing that maybe she's hunted or something, but then you look at this necklace and it looks very modern. Um, so it kind of clashes. It's like, what, what world do you belong to? Are you a very futuristic world or kind of not? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, so coloring is very easy. I'm not saying I did a great job on it, but uh, once you lay down the, the values, and this, this is what I try and do these days, I'm working off uh, pretty much black and white in the beginning, get down all the values or most of the values, um, smudge things out to smooth areas, and then harden them again with a brush, you know, and, and then use a brush to add detail where it's been lost or additional things. So it's a combination between painting and brushwork. I mean, brushwork and smudge things uh, in painting for me. Um, but then once I've got the, the values down, I throw in a gradient map and then uh, it really just helps me to put down a tone and then I can just color on top of that with a color layer at first um, and then work over it. Uh, the thing is, the key in this is that it's very important to nail values. If you don't have your values right, it's quite um, it's quite tricky. And in the original one, I didn't even know about values really that much. Um, it was more just I used whatever I had. So I was mostly coloring the image. I wasn't thinking in terms of um, painting an image and you know what that means so much. I mean, I did paintings, but I didn't know how to really carry it over into digital work. Um, so I don't know. Um, 
I'm not sure how much I like the redone version. I like the face. Um, I think the the expression is kind of cool. Um, but it, as for the rest, it's like, yeah. Uh, I imagine, what was this, nine years ago? So I imagine in nine years I'll probably be able to do a bit better. But um, this is really one of the things that I think is important to recognize with whatever journey you're on if you're an artist and you're still struggling um it's kind of those things where you have nine or ten years before you can see a huge improvement sometimes uh some people have that a lot sooner um but you know it's not like you should expect well i've been drawing for two years and i still suck um because two years might not be long enough i really hate that chain thing the I don't know, that metal thing, because it's, I should have used an ellipse tool and made that proper and, you know, proper round thing, because it, it really does stand out to me. Um, but I was just painting and whatever, not really thinking about things. So once I put in the big forms of the hair, uh, I can put in smaller forms, and that's basically all that's happening now. It's just detail work, um, putting in smaller and smaller details because the big thing works and it's no longer really a, a drawing where you see the lines and because of that I don't have to worry about you know if I draw hair I can just draw light strands and dark strands and it gives this illusion of oh there's hair here um here just throwing on some overlay um color gradients and stuff a lot of pretty much this part of the image is just tricks um, that I've learned, you know, using color balance and things to make sure the colors are working and um, <clears throat> using soft light and color dodge and overlays and adding noise filters. And here I'm blurring areas and sharpening areas. Um, so it's just, I guess this is the stuff that it's not cool in a, in a sense of, well, I guess it makes the image look cool, but it's like anyone can do it. It's just dumb stuff that, okay, you learned how to put a noise layer, for instance, like that, so that the image has some texture to it. Um, and then just some final cleanup. It's, you know, correcting some of the shapes. I wanted the ears to feel more like light is passing through. Um, and yeah, here I'm just fiddling with the hair, making sure it looks good or it looks better. So anyway, hopefully the contrast is worth this video's existence. Um, it's meant to be sort of encouraging, I guess. And uh, I don't know, I guess informative as well. I'm not sure how informative, but yeah, it's mostly just meant to be encourage, encouraging and letting you know like you, you can keep getting better and maybe you can pick up some tips of things that maybe you were doing that uh, you could adopt differently from this process or something. So yeah, I um, want to go ahead and thank Eric again for the, uh, the commission, and uh, I hope this helped, and thanks for watching.